Welcome to another episode of Regular Guy Barbecue brought to you by your friends right over here. You know those guys, right? Great guys. Hey, listen, we got a fantastic video for you today. The weather's cold. If you take a look around, you can see we got some snow last night, so it's a little chilly out. So, what better thing to make when it's chilly than chilly, right? Are you guys on board? You ready for this? Well, we got something special planned for this chili. So hold on to your seat because here we go. First thing we got, we got two pounds of ground beef. This is 8515. Okay, two pounds of that. And we've got a little bowl of seasonings that we kind of put together ahead of time off a of camera because you guys have seen us do seasonings before. So there's a tablespoon of paprika. There's a tablespoon of garlic powder. Maybe a half a tablespoon of our, our fresh ground pepper. Tablespoon of basil, one of oregano. We've got uh, half a teaspoon, or maybe a teaspoon of the white pepper, and just a little bit, maybe half a teaspoon of our lemon peel. Why are we using lemon peel? I don't know. I just like having fun and doing things that are weird, so we're gonna put that in there. But seriously, we're gonna use some other lemon later on, so you'll see what that is. So here's our ground pepper, ground burger, ground uh, ground beef. We're gonna mix up our seasonings a little bit. I didn't mix them up. There we are, another mix. We're just gonna sprinkle that across our ground beef. The ground, wind's gonna help. The wind's gonna spread it out and pollinate all the meats around here. Get rid of that for now. And we're just gonna use our hands, like we always do, mix in all that good seasoning. All right, not too hard. You guys know about this stuff, right? Yeah. We well, always like to season our beef a little bit because yeah, a good a good beef, any good meat, the, the meat flavor will speak for itself. And it does talk once in a while, but a little yeah, it is a little camera shy. That's right. But we like to add a little seasoning just to be, you know, us. So there's our ground beef. Got a little seasoning mixed in. Get that out of the way. Two pounds. Probably going to try to make about six burgers of similar size. One. So they'll end up, if you do the math right, which I can't do. Show the people how to make a little quick burger. Quick burger? I will. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me show you something! Oh, that's Fire Marshal Bill, sorry. Back to the 90s. So there's, well, that one's a little bigger than that one, so i switch a little bit there. You know, they don't have to be perfect. They're going to cook easier if you got them even sized. But we're not too concerned about that overall, because they won't be burgers for long. So. You guys know how to shape a burger, right? You just kind of pat it down, squish it a little. Now, a little pointer for you. If you're doing actual burgers, not doing what we're doing, once you get your shape pounded out, and this one's pretty small, so. You can put a little dimple in the middle. You can put a little ice cube in the middle, help you keep your moisture content up. The little dimple actually, not believe it or not, will actually help you hold your shape of burgers so they don't swell up and become, you know, this big Hockey around puck. and this thick. You know what I'm talking about? You guys know that if you've made burgers before. Yeah, you've seen it. We're not too concerned about the shape again today, so we're not going to get too overly excited about being exact because... you got to toss it like a pizza dough. <laughs> and a mozzarella. Too we, <laughs> We don't care too much about the shape of the burgers today because they're only going to be burgers for a short time. All right. So we got our burgers. There they are. Now we're going to put these, if you come on over to the grill here, I'll show you what we got going on with the grill. <coughs> you guys have seen King Kong, our 22 inch Weber kettle grill. We've got it set up with both baskets. So we've got heat on each side and nothing in the middle. And there's a reason for that. We're going to need more direct heat to cook the burgers and an indirect heat to cook the uh, chili. So we've got it set up so we can do both. All right. So we're gonna throw our burgers on real close to the baskets of charcoal so we can have our heat, more direct if you will. And we'll put three on each side so they'll cook. Kinda wanna try to sear these, but we don't wanna cook them completely all the way through. We wanna get more of a medium rare level than anything else. And the reason we want to do that, if you'll excuse me for just a moment, we want to try to get those down to more of a medium rare level because they're going to cook again once we get them in the chili. So we don't necessarily want to have them medium well, you know, food safe, 100 and Yankee Doodle Dandy degrees or whatever you want to call it. 
we're going to add just a little bit of hickory to this just to give us a little smoke. Just because we like it. Num num wood. Num num wood, that's right. Yeah, that's a good name for that. <laughs> so we're adding some num num wood to our grill. <laughs> yeah, you guys like that stuff, right? Okay. So we're going to cook those. They'll probably take about, you know, sort of five to ten minutes somewhere in that neighborhood to get them to a medium rare. Still pink in the middle. So we'll get those cooked up and we'll move from there. So while our burgers are cooking, I did want to get this prepped and get it ready to go. This chili is going to be a little bit special. One of our previous videos you saw, we did some uh, baby back ribs. We made like six racks of them. We had a whole bunch of leftovers. So guess what we're going to do? Pretty obvious, right? We're going to peel these bones. We're going to finely chop this rib meat. And then we're going to put this in our chili. Recycling. Recycle. To cycle again. That's not recycle. It's only so much ribs we can eat. Yeah, well, we made a lot of ribs and had a big uh, to-do plan. And unfortunately, a lot of folks weren't able to make it. Weather was kind of icky. It was really cold. That's an understatement. Yeah, it was really cold out here. So we, uh, we got a lot of leftovers, and that's okay. Because you can always use your leftovers. You could peel these bones ahead of time. And if you've got a, uh, what do you call it, the, the vacuum sealer, you could vacuum seal this meat and keep it in your freezer until it was time to make chili or something else if you wanted to. You could cut this stuff up real finely and you could put it in a uh, sandwich, barbecue sauce, maybe a little coleslaw on the top. Fantastic dish. Don't Just because it's rib meat doesn't mean you got to eat it on the bone. All right, so there's some. I'm going to do a little bit more before we get done. But now, one thing I want to do with this rib meat is I want to cut this up really small. And the reason I want to do that is the chili that we're making today is going to be just a straight meat chili, you know? Like if you've ever gone to a place that serves a chili dog, you don't find all these places, like some of the places we have in town that have been here for like 100 years or whatever they've been here, really good, fantastic chili. They don't serve you chili with beans and noodles and you know, all the big vegetables and all that. So this is gonna be, I guess for lack of a better term, it's gonna end up more like a sloppy joe or a meat stew or uh, meat filling, if you wanna call it that. But, so anyway, when we get our ground beef done or our burgers done, we're gonna grind those up too. And we wanna have the meats be a relatively similar consistency. So the get nice small pieces, so when the ground beef gets ground down, our rib meat will be right in there with it. Okay, so we'll get this done up and we'll show you, show you what it looks like at the end. So here's our rib meat. You can see we probably have about equal amount of how much burger we had, maybe a little bit less, about and a half or so. And what we've also done is we've cut up a whole onion. There's a white onion for you we've diced up real nicely. And we've also started our next round of seasonings, which again, we have probably a tablespoon of our black pepper, maybe a two tablespoons of paprika, a tablespoon onion powder, uh, probably a tablespoon of cayenne, some two tablespoons of garlic powder, a tablespoon of basil leaves, two tablespoons of chili powder, a little bit of oregano, and half a teaspoon of our white pepper. We've also added maybe a quarter of a cup of brown sugar to that. And the reason I do that is when I make chilies and a lot of other things that I do, dry rubs and whatnot, I like to have a little sweet with the heat. So since we have chili powder and cayenne pepper in there to make a chili, we also wanted to add just a little bit of brown sugar just to give it that sweet flavor. All right, so let's head on over to the grill here. You can see our burgers are just about where we want them. We're going to start pulling them off. They're probably in the medium rare neighborhood somewhere in there, and we're just going to, that one fell off, so. But, that's nice. That's very good. Mm. Check them on that side a little bit. Now, normally I'd cook them a little bit faster, but since it's so cold out here today, Things aren't just cooking quite as hot as we want them to, but that's all right. All right, so there's our burgers. We'll get them out of the way. We've already got one chopped up. In the meantime, <laughs> we're going to get our cast iron pot kind of in the middle of our, our grill, so it's not sitting directly over the heat. So we're going to get that warming up. All right. Nice. So, yeah, as you can see, the little one got done pretty fast. And you see there's just a little bit of pink left in there. That's exactly what we want, because we don't want all the juices gone. We want some of the juice to be able to be rendered into our chili. 
that's also why we're using an 8515 just to uh, make sure that we have some flavor left in there after we cook them originally. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop this up, get this all chopped up and small as we can because my hands hurt because it's cold. <laughs> Damn arthritis. Don't ever get old gang, whatever you do don't ever get old, it sucks. But you can still have fun even if you're old. Life's what you make it. Yeah, that's right, life is what you make it. Jamaican me crazy. This one's a little bit thicker, so you're going to see this one's a little more on the pink side, but that's not going to hurt a thing at all. Not going to hurt anything. I probably should have gloves on too, but you know the warm the warm on these uh, these burgers feels nice on my cold <laughs> hands, it really does. I mean, like, it's going to be back in the pot uh, anyway. Yeah, we're going to cook It'll it for cook a out. long time, so it's not like I'm going to be getting any germs on anything. Uh, food police, you can... You can be careful, like when it comes to food, you yeah. as long as you're going to be cooking it again. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. But food police, take a seat. Only have your gloves off if you're only cooking for yourself. You're on your own. Uh, I'm only cooking for our family, so it's not a big deal. It's still uh, nice. We don't need to give these guys a lesson. It's still That's nice to have the safety on yeah, YouTube, you know. Safety first. Teach people. Yeah, that's true. But that's all right. The food police can take a seat. <laughs> okay, so there's our burger ground up. I guess we got a little more burger than I thought we had. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Fine. Get heartier. So we're probably going to be two to one with our burger versus our uh, red meat. But that's okay. Hold a little bit for the mascot down there. All right. Pretty simple to do, right? You guys know how to do all that stuff. There it is. There we go. All right. Let me wipe my hands off quick. So now we're going to start on our chili. Now that we've got our meats all cooked and ready to go. And you saw we put our cast iron Dutch oven on there. For a couple minutes now. It's been on there warming up just a little bit. i got to get some heavy gloves. It's nice and steamy already. Uh-huh. going to be hot. So we got to get some heavy gloves on. Thank you. There we are. I'll put that over there for a minute. I'll take that and get that out of your way. Okay. Oh, I forgot something. I can cut all this. There we go. So, there's our Dutch oven warming up on our grill, nice and cute like. Pretty We're going to add a little bit of our avocado oil. You're familiar with that, right? You guys know about avocado. And you use oils you like. If you like olive oil, use olive oil. If you like canola oil, use canola oil. If you like, uh, Motor oil, use motor oil. That's your own discretion though, we ain't. That's, I ain't holding no responsibility. I use avocado oil. So we're gonna get that going, then we're gonna take that onion we chopped up. We're just gonna add that right into the pot. And we're not gonna cook these all the way through, obviously, because they're gonna be cooking for a long time, but we just wanna get that flavor to start to release a little bit. So we're just gonna add those in there for a minute or two by themselves, maybe just a few minutes while that gets hot. There we are. It's not really that hot yet. But Let's move it over on the Oof. Smoke gets in your eyes when you barbecue in. <laughs> That's all you want to go inside. Yeah. Well, that and how long it takes. Yeah, it takes a little longer out here than it would if you were doing this in the house on the stove. But, you know, in my years of cooking, on, I've cooked here and there for a long, long time. Um, yeah, grilling's a little bit more work. You're at the mercy of the weather. And it does take a little longer, but sometimes patience is worth it. It totally is worth it. It really is, you know. This takes a little longer. It's a labor of love. But I'll tell you what, when you're as big as I am, you like to eat, you're going to take the time to do it. All right, so our onions are going to get a little bit of color on them there while we're cooking down. But we're also going to add, going to add, going to add. You guys know about garlic, right? And again, if you're a true purist, you're gonna chop your own garlic cloves. I'm kind of lazy. So we're gonna add probably just a couple of tablespoons of our minced garlic. We already have garlic powder in the meat and in our seasoning packet that we made up. Our seasoning bowl, if you will. There we are. We're just gonna get them cooked down just a little bit. They're already starting to get some color to them. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's nice, huh? Look at that. Hey, you know, there's one thing I did want to mention to you guys, too. Here at Regular Guy Barbecue, we always talk about doing regular things, you know, making food with regular regular equipment and regular ingredients and things like that. Um, 
<laughs> Smoke gets in your eyes too, camera lady. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you got a face full there. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when you watch these guys on the TV, you know, they, and they, the professional chefs, they do a great job. They're, they're professional chefs. They have restaurants and millions of dollars, and that's great. But they also have a staff that pre-measures everything. They, they test cook these things before they put them on TV and all that kind of thing. Here we show you as we do it. A lot of times these are experiments that we do. We show you as we cook. If we make mistakes, we show you the mistakes. If we uh, screw things up, we show you how we screw things up. Show you how we correct them, make them to eat. You know what I mean? So there, there's, there's a little bit of that to our channel. Not that I disrespect or discount anything you see on the TV because those people make some fantastic food. And there's a reason they're on TV and we've got 38 subscribers on our YouTube channel. <laughs> hey, hey, we're not doing too bad. We got a good start, right? We're looking to get bigger and bigger as time goes on. But that's the way that goes. No, no disrespect to any of those folks. It's just that they've got a lot more resources than we do. And we do the best we can with what we it's got. It's just us 90% of the time. All right, so I'm going to go in real nice in there. So we're gonna start building our chili, okay? Now, normally I'd use beef stock. We're out of beef stock today, so we're using chicken stock. We're gonna add in probably a half a quart. You know what, let's go with the whole quart, why not, right? We got the box. We got the box, let's use it. Now, here's something for you, a little bit of FYI. If you've watched our other videos, you've heard me talk about how I don't use a lot of salt in our in foods. Uh, heart conscious kind of a thing, mostly because my heart's kind of effed. Um, we didn't put any salt in any of our um, meats. In any of our soft, uh, seasoning mm -hmm. packets there. Part of the reason being is because we're using a stock that's pre-made from the store. It already has quite a bit of sodium in it. So we're just not going to add any more sodium to it. Make sense? Hope so. Ah. Ah. That's just good, yeah. All right. We're going to start with a can of tomato sauce to go along with this. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. And we're also going to add some tomato paste. Now the tomato paste is going to act not only as a tomato in this, because we're chili usually has a tomato base, but it's also going to act as a little bit of a thickening agent. Because we've got, you can see, we've got quite a bit of liquid in there. It only boils so much with liquid out. Well, we can get it all out if we try hard enough, but it'll take all day. <laughs> I don't want to be No, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to go all day. We're going to go for about an hour on this. So there's some tomato paste just to help thicken things up a little bit. You know, while we're at it, since you brought it up, let's add the other one, too. We're going to add the other can of tomato sauce, too. Because we got quite a bit of meat there, so we'll add that other tomato sauce in there, too. I think we got more meat than liquid. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've got a lot of meat. So here comes our spice uh, package that we put together. You saw how we made that there. We've got the ingredients there. If you aren't sure what we put in, if the rewind button's broke, ask. We'll give you a list of ingredients we put in. Uh, but again, part of the reason I don't really give you a specific list or like put it in the comments and tell you exactly how much of this and how much of that we put in is you've got to make these things fit your taste buds the way you like it. So if you like it spicier, add more cayenne. Maybe you could add some, uh, you could add some hot sauce. I even suggested ghost chili peppers that we had. Uh, she was actually going after the Carolina Reapers Sorry, is what Carolina she was Reapers. after. I always get them mixed up. I just, when I we're. Add like half of one in there. When I'm making this stuff nowadays, you know, 20 years ago, yeah, I'd, I'd have probably threw three of them Reapers in here, but, <laughs> uh, you know, again, heart conscious, I'm not bulletproof like I thought I was. That'd be a fun video. It would be interesting. To eat some. So there's that. We got all our all our all those ingredients. Now we're gonna add our meat. Okay. Now most of this meat should be pretty tender. I tried a piece of that burger. The camera lady she tried a piece of that burger. Uh, it's pretty tender. Our ribs were quite tender. A lot of them are just falling literally, literally like you pick up the bone and you just get bone. There was no meat that the meat stayed behind. However. We do want to render some of the fats out. They'll get into the mix and flavor things up nicely. We oh, also like we also want to further tenderize that meat just so it's a melt in your mouth kind of a chili, right? That's what you want to have it. So our onions will be kind of our texture of this thing along with our meat. 
There we are, and that's looking pretty good so far, I think. Mm. All right. You're hungry already. So now what we're going to do is we'll check this probably about every 10 minutes or so as it cooks, but we're going to try to cook this for about an hour. And again, it's going to take some of the moisture out of there, which is a good thing because we want it to thicken up a little bit. It's going to make the meats kind of come apart a little bit more, so you've got nice tiny little chunks of meat that'll go anywhere nicely. Juicing it up, tender it up, flavor it up. I'm a side chew. We'll come back and show you in about an hour when this is getting close to done. See where we're at. So you guys remember how I told you we do make mistakes sometimes. But you always make it up as you go along. You know? We forgot to put in two ingredients. We forgot two things. That's okay. We're early on. We're only a few minutes into this. Not going to hurt anything. Remember how we put the lemon zest in a little bit earlier? A little lemon peel. We're just going to add a couple of tablespoons, maybe three. With some lemon just to give it a little zing. Lemon zing. juice. And here's the other magic ingredient we're going to add. And this again is part of the reason why we're going to be rendering this down for like an hour. Beer. You don't have to add beer. You can add your favorite beer. This one's actually from Colorado. Good beer. A friend of ours had some over here. We had a leftover can. So we're going to pour it in there and a little bit for me. Ah, yeah. Good beer. Nice and cold. Like everything else today. All right, so stir, stir. There. So you see, we made a mistake. Almost forgot a couple of ingredients. Not a big problem. We had them sitting out here ready for us. We've added them in. We showed you our mistake. We corrected it. Lids back on. Cover up the grilly. All right, King Kong, it's your job now. We'll be back again. <laughs> we'll be back again. Okay guys, so our chili is probably about 15 or 20 minutes, maybe half an hour from being rendered down where we want it to be nice and thick and happy, right? Um, going a little slower because it's just freaking cold out here. Okay. So we're going to start prepping for the next step in this. Are you ready? Because this is going to be... Hold on to my socks. Hold on to your sock and they're going to fall off. <laughs> Check this out. Now this is a sweet bread. One of our favorites. It's from one of our favorite states that we've been to several years ago. Now this is, comes in a nice little pan, which I didn't know at first when we picked these up. My daughter pointed these out and I thought, man, those look really good. Let's get those. The little pan's going to be even more beneficial to us. But we won't talk about that right now. We'll show you that in a little bit. So what we're going to do is probably about a fourth of the way down. And I don't have my bread knife out here because I know. Seems to be working. Didn't plan that far ahead, but this is a nice serrated knife, so we're going to use it. There we are. Cut our lid off. Look at that, huh? Now, can you guys guess the next step? If you can, pause the video. Put a comment below that tells you. Oh, I know what the next step is. It's... Tell us what it is. Get it right, we'll give you a like. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll give you a minute, figure it out. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, there it is. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some of this bread out. You can pick it as big or as little as you want. You could even take a knife and cut it on the outside, but we're not that sophisticated. We just use our fingers. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the good bread, isn't it? <laughs> you guys can guess if you don't know what it is, you can figure out what kind of bread it is. And you can use your own kind of breads. You know, one of the things I will show you while I'm in the middle of doing this, I'll just stop for a minute and show you this too. These rolls, we're also going to use at a later time, not today. But see, these are from a local place we have in town. And we're going to use these for something similar at a later time, not today. Um, I'm going to eat all this. <laughs> that's not fair. You're getting it all. <laughs> all right. I got to have room for later. That's true. You're going to need room with this big monster. If you eat like we do, this is going to be one serving. <laughs> no, not really. I'm probably going to eat like a That'll third. That'll be all I eat today. Yeah, this is going to be the only meal you have. All right. So we're getting down there pretty good. But we don't want to get too close to the bottom. Because as you can imagine what we're going to do, if you ain't figured it out. Mm, let's go bread. This is going to be our bread bowl for our chili. All right. Wow, that's good bread. <laughs> good bread is important. So... We're going to show you the first step now, and it'll be a little bit yet, but the miracle of time of editing videos, it'll be instant. Feeling it's cold out. Yeah. Keeps the food cold. Keeps the food cold, that's right. So we're going to 
put some cheese in the bottom. Get that all packed in there nice and purity like. And the next step, get the cheese off my fingers, is we're gonna put chili in there. Okay? This is gonna be incredible. So, we'll be back on in a minute. It'll be instant for you guys because you're watching edited videos, but for me it's gonna be about another 20 minutes. <laughs> Good bread. We'll show you what happens when we put the chili in there and where we go next. All right guys, so we're about an hour and 10 minutes-ish with our chili in the pot cooking. Uh, it's taken a little longer than I kind of hoped it would and mostly because it's just flipping cold, as we've mentioned. We prepped all of our bread bowls here. We're gonna, we're gonna have those over there in just a minute. But for right now, let's show you the chili. Take a look at that. Now you can see that that thing's rendered down probably a good inch or so in that bowl, right, or in the pot. And it's, it's thickened up quite a bit. I'd like it to be thicker, but it's not bad. It tastes amazing. And our bread will soak up some of the juices. So, not a big problem. So I'm gonna take that off of the fire. Where are you putting it? Yeah, I got this, don't worry about it. We'll just put this right over here to the side so we got it ready for us. There we are. And, just let me get that, it's okay. As you can see, once again, we've got our bread bowl kind of hollowed out and our cheese in the bottom. I'm gonna take some of that chili, and try to filter out a little bit of the juice, and we're just gonna spoon that right in there. Camera's gonna die soon, by the way. Okay. <coughs> Ooh, smoke gets in your eyes, your ears, and your nose, and your throat. There we are. That's what our bread bowl is gonna look like. But we're not just done yet. More cheese from Wisconsin. Yeah, let's add a little bit more chili, just for funsies. All right. Oh, it's so full of that. <laughs> yeah. Serving of one, and no, it's 100. 100. <laughs> There we go, a little bit of cheese on the top just for good measure. There we are. So we're gonna prep all three of these and we're gonna add those to our to our grill for probably about 10 minutes or so. We're just gonna let that cheese melt, let that brown up a little bit and uh, we'll show you the final results. We putting the covers on? Nope, no cover. All right. We'll show you the final results in just a little bit. Yep. All right guys, we're about numb. The battery on the camera is dying slowly. But we're gonna finish this video up quick so you can see what the end results look like. All right, let's see what we got, shall we? Take a look at that. Those have been on there about 10 minutes. And the reason we put them on the fire again is we just wanna crisp up the bread just a little bit. It isn't not a lot, but just a little, you know? So they're nice and crispy to eat. And we're saving the lids because we wanna have the lids for your Dunkin' bread, okay? There you go. It's all done. How's that look, guys? Does that make you hungry? If it don't, you're on the wrong damn channel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to get these wrapped up, get the last one in the grill for 10 minutes, get that done. I want to tell you thank you very much for joining us on this video. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you being part of the Regular Guy Barbecue family. Don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you. When we get to 1,000, we're going to start our live videos of the Q&A is called Under the Learning Tree. Um, we're also going to be doing a giveaway in the not too distant future, hopefully sooner than later, but it's taking some time to get it together. Maybe 100 subscribers. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we get to 100, we're going to give out a, give a prize away. If you're local, we can give it to you. If not, we can mail it to you. We'll talk about that as time comes. Uh, when we get to 1,000, we're going to do a big giveaway. Okay? Big giveaway. But we got to get there first, guys, so please pass the word, like the videos. Don't forget to hit the notification button. Make sure you hit all so you get everything we put out when we put it out. You can be the first to watch these videos that we make. Thanks for joining us, Regular Guy Barbecue. Peace out.